Hey guys, today I'm going to go over the expected value of opening a box of Dominaria. Dominaria. And this article that I'm going to talk about is from MTG Goldfish. A lot of you ask where I get my graphs from. I use a combination of MTG stocks and MTG Goldfish. I also do occasionally read MTG Finance articles on Goldfish, so I like I like their writing a lot better than some other places. Now, when you talk about Mythics, you got the con. Obviously, forty-two dollars is very high for him. I don't expect him to keep that price, but it's nice why it will last. And then Mox Amber, a lot of you guys were saying this card was no good when I was excited about it. I think it's good. So it's 27 bucks. The mythics are very good. I think what happens when you don't have masterpieces, something has to be valuable. And you tend to see a $40 mythic as opposed to Oath of the Gatewatch. I know we had Gideon there. and that, But even Gideon, he should have been a $40 card. He was always stuck at 25 so you have History of Belenia. That one is the one that most has gone up in time. You have Lyra. Lyra has dropped a tiny bit, and I'm okay with that. Uh, you have some Planeswalkers, Jaya. You have Weatherlight at $2. Bladewing and Motani at $2.20. So those are definitely card mythics you don't want to see. But like any set, you're going to have really good mythics, and then you're going to have really, really bad mythics. And part of this is uh, due strictly to randomness and the lottery game. Now, what is less of a lottery is the rares. Uh, so here, the average mythic is about $8, and we're expecting around four mythics a box. So the mythics add $36. The Mythics are a definition of lotteries. I remember when we didn't have Mythics and the box expected value was more on par. So some boxes will be close to uh, break even. Some boxes will even be slightly better. And then the large majority of boxes are going to lose money. I like it when the expected value per box, there's a smaller range of that happening. So when you talk about that range, which is really important to understand, the range gets smaller if your rares and uncommons are more valuable. And I think that's what's happening in this set, is that you do have some rares that are over $5 or $4, the cost of a pack. That's always something I like to see. So Saleh, Voice of Plenty, is a very good angel. At six dollars, uh, so for falls is at five, and even something kind of janky like Taraxis is around three dollars. You want to see as many of these rares above four dollars as possible, and that's because you're limiting the factor of randomness. Now, you might not get the con scion of you might not get the con. Scion of Urza, which is that one mythic in all the mythics that are is worth more than forty dollars, but you are very likely to get either a Saleh or a Sofa Falls, right? Like one of the two, and you can actually see this in the percentage. The multiplier is 0. 0.6 when the mythic multiplier is 0. 0.3. So it is way more important to have a value. It is twice as for the expected value of the box, twice as important to have a good rare set than a mythic set. So Steel Leaf is four, Sofa Falls is free, Guided Lotus is three dollars, but also comes in the introduction deck, which may be interesting to buy when it's on discount. Traxxas is three dollars, the Gate Way, Gate Watch, is three dollars, Cable Stronghold is three dollars, I like that one. Uh, Woodland Cemetery is 280, Isolated Chapel is 246, and so on. So, yeah, I think that... And remember, these prices that we're going over, these are actually the price that you can get. The price that you can actually get. 
not like the inflated price that retailers like Card Kingdom are trying to sell it to you. So the average rare is about a dollar and the total value is about $37. Now, there are is 19 bulk rares and eight semi bulk rares, so don't don't think this set is incredible it is getting a lot of hype but it does suffer from the fact that the rares half of them are pretty much bulk so the rares did not do as good as some sets right um, and that is important to note the mythics look really flashy they look good the foils uh, a multiplier is extremely high which we'll talk about a little later but the rares right now they're just about so so they're not like anything to write home about and that's not because the rares that we went over were bad. It's just that there is uh, 27 of them, which is bulk, which is a lot. So we have uncommons, commons, and bulk. The uncommon slot, like the expected value of uncommon slot is super important. And even if there was a very good common, like in a master set, yeah, I, I would much rather have expensive commons and kind of crappy mythics than really awesome mythics and then crappy commons, rares, and uncommons. Uh, the chance of getting a mythic, again, is not very high. But the chance of getting a one of these uncommons is almost guaranteed that you will get multiples of them. Now, I have been he hearing rumors that there are different rarities of uncommon. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, from the boxes I opened, it doesn't seem like it's true. Like I've got as many of these uh, dampening spears as I wanted. Um, cast down is pretty good. Anything over a dollar is generally considered very good. All right, and that brings us to the average value uh, of the foil. So Mythics won every six boxes. So not that high but the average value is very high because the foil multiplier on all these legendary commander cards so typically you would never see a 32 dollars value but here you do next you have rares at six dollars and uncommons two per box one dollar and commons free per box so this is actually kind of interesting to look at i never knew that every box has one rare or i guess on average and then Every box should have two uncommons and then three commons. Makes sense, but still nice to know. So your foil should be around $14, which is very, very high. And that is because there's so many legendary uncommons and rares and mythics. Now we have the price breakdown. And the price breakdown is pretty interesting. You get to 98 89 or 275 a pack the foils are higher than i expected the commons on commons bulk that's about right for a new set the rares are higher than i expected and the mythics are higher than I expected so overall this is a really great set so this is uh even counting the 15 percent discount off tcg player market price to account for shipping and fees. And this is one of the reasons that I, I do like MTG GoFist. Their math makes sense to me. A lot of times when I read other articles, where it's trying to like spike up something, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so what they did was they took TCG Marketplace and they dropped it by 15% discount. Full retail is around 114. This, this is a very good set. Um, not much to complain. If you buy a box now, you probably won't regret opening it. And if you get that promo, then you'll be over $100, no problem, if your store is not greedy. Now, if your store is greedy, you should always report them because, you know, they're not going to, like, in my experience, Wizard Coast is not really going to, like, punish the store that much. It'll give, like, a slap on the hand. But then the player base will get rewarded with game day. Look, if somebody's going to take a buy box promo, they're probably going to take the game day mat. They're going to take the game day promos. I mean, these are products that Wizard Coast gives to stores for free. And there's really no reason that the store should take it. 
overall, would I buy this box? I, I say yes right now. It's a yes uh, in the future. I don't know what's going to happen with this box. This is one of the most popular sets in Magic right now. The last time I saw sales this good or excitement over this uh, was Battle for Zendikar. And that was before we knew that Masterpieces. That was when we assumed that Masterpieces would only be in Battle for Zendikar, like the Priceless Treasure. Then the Masterpieces started showing up all over the place, right? Uh, so very, very impressive set in my opinion. Uh, from an expected value point. Bye, guys.